<clears throat> other other things we've learned this preseason. All five starting quarterbacks could be good. All the, the first five first rounders. Yeah, like I don't know if people are talking about this enough. Like we're we're sort of focusing in on the individuals, right? Like each one of these guys looks good or what their situation is. When is it time to start talking about how good this draft class could be as when a they group? play in the regular season? First. Is it though? Yeah. Is it? Yes. I think it might be now. Um, Let's do it now then. How well, good is this group going to be? I was telling you yesterday that at one point in the pre draft process, <clears throat> Adam Schefter tweeted that quarterbacks are going to go five, five of them are going to go in the first six picks. And it, it obviously didn't end up going that way. Two of them slid to one degree or other. But like maybe it should have. Like we're looking at these guys and. For, for a long time, because of the way the reports, the, the 49ers trade and the reports that they were interested in Mac Jones, the draft process became about tearing down Mac Jones and how he didn't belong in that top conversation and why he wasn't worth the number three overall pick. He looks like the best quarterback of the group right now. Now, what if all five of those guys are going to end up being good? Justin Fields is the one that I've had the most concerns with sort of all the way through. And I still liked Justin Fields from start to finish. And even watching him play, it's like, all right, the negative stuff is still there, but he might just be freaky enough that it doesn't matter. Like, he's going to work anyway, like with the yeah. accuracy and the size and the athleticism, and it might not always be conventional or orthodox or the way you want to see it. But if the dude is able to, like, run around past the defensive end and then just fire a ball into a, a closing window 30 yards away for a touchdown, pff, who cares? He did. I mean... Justin Fields did have one of the throws of the preseason, did it the other night. I mean, his his game his game was okay up until that point, and I think that's what Fields brings. I'm a, I'm a little surprised that he's doing so much outside the pocket because I do think he likes to win. But I think a big pocket. part of that is that line is just terrible. Like he's he almost has to at this point. It hasn't been great, um, but to your point, we talked about how long he's holding onto the ball, like even a second longer than even some of the longest yeah. holding you know, longest uh, guys in the in the league so it, it is going to look different um but his outside the pocket playmaking and speed and, and we know the arm talent is there with Justin Fields they're all just really intriguing Trevor Lawrence now he played the backups for the Cowboys yesterday but even in previous games again there was at least one throw per yeah. game leading up to yesterday where it was like wow comeback route in his in his first game touch throw uh, over a linebacker rolling to his left in the second game and then yesterday put it all together in an incredible effort so you know like, Lawrence is looking as advertised as well right Lawrence hasn't been great generally over preseason but he's the one that you're coming into the, the process with the highest degree of just money in the bank right just yeah uh, resume you know career track record it's like all right we're pretty sure Trevor Lawrence is amazing and if you see that's one where I, there is something like everything gets sort of criticized in terms of bias for like reinforcing your priors that's what preseason is right of course it's just about backing up your prior take or dismissing it if it doesn't fit your prior take but there's something to the idea that like sometimes your prior take is the thing that you should be it is the foundation piece you should be building things around and you know when the data supports it you should probably lean that way and trevor lawrence is a good example right we've seen so much evidence that trevor lawrence is amazing so far that it only makes sense to like take the pieces that fit with that from preseason, add them into the picture and kind of discard the stuff that didn't. Uh, particularly when you can explain the stuff that didn't as, hey, half of his offensive line didn't start in the key game where he was looking sort of flustered and under pressure a little bit. So I, I think it does make sense to kind of reinforce your priors with what we've seen so far with Trevor Lawrence. But that's like, Trevor Lawrence hasn't played great Trey Lance has made more mistakes than you would have expected, but he's also suffered from an insane amount of drops, and the talent is obvious. Like, the arm looks insane. He's made some really big plays. I, they I, showed... really, I, I really wonder if the ball is just getting on Niners receivers so hot from Lance. I cannot believe how live his arm is. And, and I don't know if I'm being blinded by the fact that he also does throw everything 100 miles an hour. Yeah. It is like Baker. I mean, Baker had a point last year in those first six weeks or whenever when he was struggling, he would not put touch on anything. And Baker still struggles with that at times. Not that they don't have it. It's not, a, not that it's not in their bag. It's just sometimes it's just it's coming in too hot. Like Lance's pass on the goal line, everybody's like, oh, that's catchable. That's catchable. Like, yeah on instant replay it hit his hands but it was like it's, a, it's like an eight yard pass that is coming in 
70 miles an hour, whatever it was. I, I do wonder how much you go from Garoppolo to Lance. Garoppolo's got an okay NFL mm. arm. Lance is – the ball is flying out of his hand. I do wonder how much that's affecting those drops as I well. I do think there's something – not. I don't necessarily buy into the idea that if a guy fires it like a million miles an hour the whole time, that's automatically harder to catch. Um, but I do think there's something to – if you're if you're a receiver playing in practice and your rep can alternate between a guy with a cannon and a guy that doesn't it looks different yeah not just looks different but it's like it feels different it's right. coming at you different like that i think can create drops way more than like if i'm only catching from the dude with the howitzer you automatically adjust right that's just part of what you're dealing with but if you're if it alternates and sometimes the howitzer is coming at you and sometimes you know Jake Fromm's pass is coming your way like the bills receivers having to alternate from josh allen to jake from that's ridiculous not much different i mean not can't get much more different right i can't even imagine how different the ball like if you're running the same route two times in a row in a drill and those are the two passes coming your way it's like it's a completely different timing i'll save the baseball analogy good thank god but it's similar in baseball of course it is yeah when you have a slow pitcher and a fast so I'm not saying, as a hitter, it screws yeah, up the time. I, I don't necessarily think that just the velocity that he's putting on the ball is causing that, but I think there might be an there might be something to the idea that going from Garoppolo to Trey Lance and back creates that. So I think I think Trevor Lawrence has, has been as advertised. Zach Wilson, we've talked about, he didn't play at all this weekend, was just crisp and accurate, and you know he made plays all over the place. Uh, Trey Lance, who we just mentioned. The Niners rolling out the 2QB system yesterday. We'll talk about that later. I do want to talk about the 2QB system legitimately. But Trey Lance, what we just discussed, rushing ability. He showed all the throws in the bag. Probably got to be a little bit more consistent. Stop trying to throw the ball through defenders. He's been the most volatile of the rookies. Um, Justin Fields probably the second most volatile of the rookies just because um, he's had some spectacular plays took that sack and against Buffalo and you made a great point yesterday though that he might have the worst situation of any of them and and that's part of it as well right we always we said on draft day right Trey Lance has the best situation Kyle Shanahan and the Niners um but yeah Fields with the offensive line many question marks about there about that and then it's like Allen Robinson Darnell Mooney's a good complimentary receiver it's just it's an okay group of playmakers with a star and and to be fair he hasn't like they haven't really let him loose with the with the good Group, True. You know what I mean? Like it's the situation that that's possible in Chicago. He hasn't had to play with yet, so we haven't really seen how good that situation is. The offensive line does look like a concern, whether it's the starters or the backups. But I think the receiving group would certainly get better if Fields got the chance with the ones that he hasn't had yet. But it is interesting that like none of these situations are terrible, which is again a help. Like sometimes if you're talking about a really good draft class of quarterbacks. One or two of them are going to a train wreck of a situation, and you're like, right. those guys don't have a shot to be good year one because everything around them is a mess. You look at this group, there's nobody there that shouldn't be able to be good because of the situation around them. Jacksonville, all right, it's debatable given what we've seen so far and the relative lack of the exciting things that were promised so far. The Jets actually seem to have a pretty good situation all of a sudden. Um Chicago might be the worst, but as we say, at least the receivers get better uh, when he plays with the ones. San Francisco is a great situation. The Patriots is a great situation. Like, none of these guys are going to be automatically prohibited from being good early because of what's around them. I'm watching the Jaguars play in Trevor Lawrence, and I'm seeing how much the tight end looks like they could be involved. And Trevor Lawrence does a nice job throwing to the middle of the field and, and using the tight end you know, from what I've seen in the Jags, I, I know they any. just released Tim Tebow. Yeah. But they have one of the worst tight end rooms in the NFL. Uh, there are, it, like, which, uh, James O'Shaughnessy, who was targeted a few times yesterday. I mean, he's he's an okay backup tight end. Which only goes to highlight, like, just, <laughs> just how terrible a tight end Tim Tebow was. Right, as, as expected, a 33-year-old in a new position. Yeah.